Hello, everybody. We are about to go virtual with you. This is Chef Chris, and I'm Sam Ed. Every week we do four wines from around the world here on Thursday nights, Old North State Winery at 6 p.m. in downtown Mount Airy. Our fair city. And for those of you that can't quite make it here, we do these virtual videos so that you don't miss out on all these exciting, delicious wines from around the world. We just think it's really important everybody understand the world of wine, not just the wines that we make here at Old North State Winery. We think those are awfully important as well. And actually, we have a couple of our staff members at the uh, Surrey Symposium. That's right. Yeah. Pouring our wines today Pouring for the masses. So uh, there's a bunch of, uh, hopefully, a lot of exposure for our wines um, at the college today. We're really excited about it. Of course, Chef Chris and I are enrolled in that college, and we, uh, we sure do think the world of that program. All right, so with that being said, we need to drink the wines that we have selected for this week. There's two more if you're here in person, but uh, I think it's fun even if you come to the to the one here. You can always come back and watch the video. Oh, yeah, it's a different, different take sometimes. We, we get a little rowdy Thank here you. in person, so you might not hear everything. So you can always come back and check the video, right? Uh, I don't want to make note that this is a really sexy bottle, so. <laughs> First thing I noticed was... Uh, well, she got some look, good, at the, look at the curves yeah, on that girl. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. So Great package. I was very fortunate enough uh, last week to spend an uh, early morning um, tasting of about 12 wines. With great, way to, at, great way to yeah, do it. At, at, at Elephant's Corner. And he was showcasing some of his new-to-me wines. I'm sure he's very familiar with them, but they were new to me. Uh, this is from Wildberg, and we're talking about the coastal region of the Cape, uh, South Africa. Uh, this is a absolute stunner, and you know, honestly, uh, you know, bottles and labels don't really honestly matter, but if the wine is delicious and it's gorgeous. It's a, it's a nice perk. That's a really nice bonus. Yeah, we're, we're getting ready to do our big uh, holiday season uh, push, Chef, and we're, we're really thinking of wines that go so well with all these holiday parties, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, Friendsgiving, all these things that involve food of, of a lot of different backgrounds yeah, and styles. absolutely, and a lot of foods that you don't roll out most of the rest of the year. I think yeah, that's really right. the that's a good the, point. That's a really good point. These are these are flavor profiles that we generally hit just for about a month out of the year mm -hmm. where most foods I find that we probably do eat out of season. Oh, you know, we never absolutely. we never absolutely. you know we never make these kind of holiday the meals. Yeah. yeah. I mean yeah. it's like oh I need a Right, Some stuffing and turkey. Right, and yeah, but so we just don't do it. And uh, root maybe, vegetable. Maybe we should. Though. Well, <laughs> my dad does. <laughs> yeah, he likes to have Thanksgiving a couple times. A year. Yeah, well, it's a great it, tradition. It is wonderful. I'll tell you that. But we we're, we're so we, we had our ears perked up listening to our different distributors and, and uh, different winemakers about uh, what wines they recommend for the holidays. And I think this is a great example of a wine that's. It's actually a stunner uh, visually on the table, uh, more than just the bottle, the color. This is just a beautiful, uh, just a kiss of color here. This is just 100% uh, Senso. And of course, Chef Chris and I are big Senso fans, when they, particularly when they're from South Africa. South Africa seems to have a real, a real niche market on the Senso game, you know, where it's you don't see it usually as a blender in most of the places, and they really figured out how to make it stand on its own in both uh, in its red form and this gorgeous rosette. Yeah, so this to me is, uh, it has, like, if you're a white wine lover, you're gonna love this rosette, because it has a lot of structure to it. Even though we're talking about Senso, this is not what I would consider big or heavy. It is intense though, and that's we we like we like wines that get our attention, and this certainly did the first time I had it, and it still does today. We are there's an elegance to this wine, there's a brightness to this wine, and I really find that you know uh, that there's 
there's simplicity here. It's not like you have to get real cerebral with this one, but if you want to, you can. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of like that. You can get as serious about this yeah. one, or as just you know have as fun as you want with this. Just one. enjoy it, yeah. Right. And I think that's kind of when we think of the holiday. That's really what they are, you know. When it comes, there's always like people like Chris and I that are in the kitchen cooking and taking everything, you know, to the next level stuff. But then there's your your uncle Fred, who's just there to you know drink all your wine, and he doesn't really know much about wine, and so uh, he can enjoy this wine just as much this as you as the chef. Uh, preparing the food and sipping along and really getting uh, kind of geeky about it. It, uh, it provides both paths very, very, <laughs> very well. Very yes. And, you know, my family loves to start with rosés and white wines mm -hmm. and bubbles. And this is perfect for any of that, um, you know, style of, of service that you want to do. And then we kind of gravitate towards the, the bigger, richer reds later uh, if not towards the end of the meal, uh, I, I just don't find that most of the holiday meals really lend themselves to big reds, juicy reds, absolutely. And so this, to me, kind of captures that first half of the of the meal. It really does to me, and, and this is just tradition in our family. But the only time really in the holidays the the big red is like Christmas Eve. Mm, yeah, that's the only one we do beef. Yes, we'll do, like, we like do a prime rib, prime or rib, bone in, prime rib, or yeah. a fillet, or a whole fillet. Right. Or yeah, that's Christmas usually, Eve's a different breed. That's the Christmas yeah. Eve yeah. meal, and so there's usually a big red for that. But uh, Christmas Day, Thanksgiving, New Year's Day, you know that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's usually the fruity reds and the and the brighter stuff here. Yeah, right, for sure, definitely. So. Now this is a this is a wine too that to me begs me to come back to the glass every time. I mean, and every time it, it will keep coming. That beautiful acidity, but it, it almost has, I'm not going to say it has tannins, but it has a dryness to mm -hmm. it that almost begs to say that they're tannins. Because your mouth gets real dry and you get real, real thirsty in real about 10, 10 seconds. seconds. And I think and the same like, so is what it's doing. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. If it does have, I mean, it's not a long time. Mm -hmm. Not a long time, but it's getting some seed and... Skin it gets a light. Contact. I do a light press on this, so um, you know, Chef. I was pressing my Merlot mm. in that class last yeah, night. Yeah, absolutely. And I was tasting the the free run, and the free run juice that comes out. And that's just from gravity. But then, in the when the press starts giving a little bit of pressure to those those grapes and the seeds and, and all the the must there, uh, tasting as I go along. Those tannins after pressing they're, are they're, they're significantly yes. more. Even though this is a rosé, and a lot of times we we don't think tannins with rosé, but if there's been some pressing, which they do say there has been some pressing. They say that's where their color comes from, not necessarily skin contact, but the actual pressing process. Then it would lend to say sense. that there's it technically uh, from from this process there could be or probably is tannins. We just don't typically associate rosés right. with tannins. And we do, you know, just a hint. I yeah, mean, I think yeah. it's just adding to yeah. the, like, the like, It's not chewy. It's like you said, the overall structure of this is really stout, which is great. Yeah, which yeah. Is so, so kind of coming back around, you know, I've just really been saying this is pinpointing of white wine drinkers, bubble drinkers, and rosé drinkers. But those of you that are into the reds, I think you can have a real appreciation for this because the finish gives you the mouth feel the the finishing mouth feel yes of that, are, that, are, that are rot, uh, dry red you know almost you know i've been drinking so much italian reds God, right? we, of course we had the big etruscan dinner two nights ago where we had four different producers from around italy we had eight different wines and there's something about those those tannins uh those red tannin particularly uh, uh from from the leaner reds like the Norella Mascalese and the San Giovese. And this kind of reminds me of that finish, it's like an great, Italian yeah. red That's finish. A great, great call. So uh, texturally, there's a lot. There, see, I told you, you can get cerebral with this wine if you want and to. You, and <laughs> it, was easy, it was easy for you to, 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 to go on that. I mean, to find all these little nuances. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've been very, been very fortunate uh, to 
to have a lot of great wine producers in the house here lately, and we appreciate all of them out there. We're going to do some uh, videos on some of their wines as well for those of you that weren't here at the big wine dinner. That's pretty good. The Etruscan one there. We're going to we're going to well, we're going to circle back through and do some because we feel like uh, we want to get the message out on these producers that it's important to us to support the people that are doing what I would consider wines of significance, and this right here is certainly so wild bird um, absolutely stunning work like i said coastal region so oftentimes people will say there's a hint of sea air or salinity in these wines um you know that's really hard for some people to pick up on but i do feel like this has a little bit of that salt kiss to it I think it's right there. Yeah. I think the salinity so, is, is one of the things that's in the front. Mm -hmm. um, it may not like you're gargling salt water. Right, but yeah. <laughs> it's easy to see, or it's easy to taste the the coast on this. Mm. I just, I couldn't believe how, actually, you know, I was going there to meet Annie to pick up some wine from the Chamonix wine dinner that we did. Mm. The, and Neil, the, the winemaker, was here and you know, a lot of that wine had to be shipped over across the, you know, the planet, basically, on boats. And it took a while to get here, about took five, six weeks, I think. And so I was going by to pick up uh, the Pinot and the Pinotage, and lo and behold, you know, Andy's got, you know, all these wines, and this was one of them. I bought it on the spot. And I was like, I just like, throw that on the order. It's coming Let's back go. to the area with me. So uh, this, was, this was certainly a wine that stood out to me. And uh, hopefully it stands out to you as you're trying this with your virtual pack. If you do not have a virtual pack, you can always touch base with me, and you know we can we can maybe like get you a bottle at another time for those of you that have missed this video. For you know if you're looking at this years from now <laughs> or whenever it is that you're checking this out for the first time, the time capsule. Uh, you can certainly check with us to see if we have the latest vintage or if, if, if there's something available that you want to try from previous episodes we'll certainly try to track that down for you chef in terms of food what do you i mean the sky is is wide open here i'm gonna give you a few options and you okay. can because you know you said rosé so i i have this really beautiful cheese i wanted to to put with it because that's always a home run um but you know i also thinking about a little crab salad too with this. I mean, I think it would be the brininess, be the brininess yeah. with the acid and a little bit of saline. Yeah, what is what is your salad? What would that be? What were you thinking? In um, I'm thinking what would best be. Oh, we lose our, our video. No, no. Oh, it's just a temporary just, little oh, power. It's just a little wrong. power notification. Okay. But we didn't lose any time. Sorry about the glitch. The uh, technical guy is going to be reprimanded. Mm. <clears throat> Big time. Right. Well, I've got that Rocket Robiola. Or we could do some, like, caperberry, caperberry kind of crab. Yeah. You want to do that? Let's do uh, that. Let's do that. That sounds awesome. You can, you can make that happen? We can do it. All right. We can do it. If you can make that happen, that's going to be a killer. Because I, I think the acidity, the acidity with that, with that, with that briny, I think you, you got to get up something wonderful. Uh, well, Chef, mm -hmm. I guess we better move on to the next one if we're running low on power. Mm. Now, I let's, had a let's, let's power up with let's some more power. power. Right. The, the, um, I may have forgotten to plug in my, my recorder there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well... On the same day as our big wine event, uh, I actually uh, had a two-hour lunch with uh, Francesca Alba, um, um, Vara, sorry, uh, from Alba, uh, Dolcetta di Alba is this offering, and this was uh, quite a quite a anticipated visit, I would say. This was a remake visit from. She was going to be in North Carolina a couple of years ago, I think it was. It's been a while. And her remake date, now that she's healthy, has come back. We had this beautiful dinner uh, in Winston at Roosters and just uh, had a private room nice. and just drank well, very well, ate very well. And I uh, actually got to do Q&A with uh, Francesca and it was just a real honor 
you know, of course, I love the Alba area mm -hmm. I, and Lamora and, you know, Asti, all these areas that great wines are grown. Uh, this is the Dolcetto grape, as I alluded to. Dolcetto di Alba means it's Dolcetto from Alba. Uh, I think my mom's going to love this wine because there's birds on yeah, it. Yeah, the birds are going to be nice. <laughs> and, uh, but this Vara is, you know, one of the biggest names, if, if not the biggest, in my opinion, for Varolo. Uh, Chris and I have gifted each other Varas many a time. Many Varas a time. and Vietis. That's kind of the mm -hmm. what we the, the the two that we hit the most. I would say Not that a, that Magnum is still sitting there. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I yeah. don't know how it's still that sitting is, there. You, yeah, you that is shocking. But the great the great thing about that chef is it'll age for twenty five years. Well, not this one, <laughs> but they will. Yeah. So typically, uh, this one's going to age about another. 10 days to Thanksgiving. And then it, oh, whatever. that's right. Thanksgiving's coming up, so that'll be a goner. So Dolcetto is this kind of, it's another grape from that, you know, famous region for Nebbiolo, uh, but they do have other grapes, uh, and then that's uh, that's a great thing. You know, we uh, you, you don't want to get fatigued on the same varietal. And Dolcetto is that grape that so many people are drinking there. That's what I realized when I was in there in, uh, this past April is how many people are drinking other grapes than just uh, Nebbiolo? And Dolcetto is one of these uh, grapes that people really re reach for. Um, you can see, I'm hoping you can see, certainly in your glass if you have a bottle at home, the richness of color here, the purple hues. Uh, this is no, you're not gonna mistake this for Nebbiolo. It's, you know, Nebbiolo is pink, it is, you know, clear, and this is uh, this is taking the light, yeah. you know, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a very, very, very silky, rich wine. Yeah, this big, is... big, big fruit on the mm -hmm. nose, and it really entices you to 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 come on in, and that's what I'm gonna do, Chef. Yeah, black and blue fruit here. I'm sure there's some red fruit swimming in there somewhere too, but my first impression is. Yeah, more the blue and black, and it's very luscious, very luscious, luscious wine. Yeah, so this is this is kind of the opposite of Nebbiolo in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. It's because yeah. it this it seems to be more plush. It's darker fruits. It's it's just juicy, really. Yeah, it's very juicy. And we still have, you know, it still has a dry finish, but not with the intensity of dryness that you would expect from a Sangiovese or Nebbiolo. So here, this to me is a great way to to kind of meet my American friends halfway. So oftentimes, my big struggle for you know teaching people the passion of my my uh, Barolo love and Barbaresco love, it just it's just a little too you, tight. You, yeah, and you got to you got to work your way. You gotta, into yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And, 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 and shockingly, as bold as they are, they have so much nuance in them. This to me uh, kind of is it's going to be more approachable. It's more plush, uh, more fruit dense, almost like a Malbec. You know, yeah, in terms yeah, of, yeah, yeah, very good, very good. But there is still that quintessential Italian tannin dry that I love, but just not to the extremes of the other uh, styles that I'm accustomed to myself. That kind of turn other people the other direction. So I think at it's first, a, at first, at yeah, first, sure, at really first, does. until they kind of get there. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get there early, mm -hmm. you know. But but once you 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 start drinking around, wait your way around Italy a little bit, and build your build your palate up to that style, then they become craveable. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So here is if you have again, this is going to work well too at holiday time, as I said, when you're transitioning from the later evening where you're getting into, you know, desserts. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, if, or if you're the kind of people who do if you like cheese and meats for dessert, if you yeah. have a really long dinner, yeah. you know, where you still have dessert, but you have that sort of thing even after the mains, great way to kind of mm -hmm. start coming back down the ladder. Too. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we still have a beautiful dry here. This is an amazing food one. Just different food, just different food friendly styles. So in other words, different styles of food is what I'm really trying to say here. So this is going to lend itself 
towards beef, or if you're doing Italian food for Thanksgiving, which, uh, you know, I mean, I have it's a lot of friends. It's becoming more and more a thing. Like, I, it I, is. The more people I talk to. Raviolis and tortellinis and, and lasagnas. Uh, big lasagnas. Yeah. Yeah. Even, like, people are doing different stuff, like seafood lasagnas or different meat. And, I mean, it's like, yeah. that's like a thing. It is. It, it really is. Them. And so if that's that, if that's your, if that's your version of Thanksgiving, well, hell, you got something really special right here from one of the premier producers in Italy at a very, very approachable price, under $25, uh, both of these wines. And so we're, we're talking about incredible value, particularly for Vara, because, you know, Vara has a, you know, they have a, a lot invested in their wines. And it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a treat for us to get. It's a treat. Entry, to get entry level prices for wine that is clearly not entry level. Well, you we just have to have a switch in mentality to their version of entry level. Correct. And, and, but, and which is a much higher which standard. Which I mean, like, when you said we were doing this, I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, it is a treat. There's no no two ways about it. I mean, this is a real coup to get for you to get that for everyone. Yeah, this is so delicious, memorable. I think this is a great, you know, if yeah, if you want to keep uh, keep kind of pushing your friends and family into different areas and kind of get them out of where they're locked into, you know, a lockdown palate is is okay. It's okay if, just, if you sure. found something you like the, and you drink it all the time. But boy, it sure is fun when you can diversify and try new things, have new experiences. It makes every day more fun when you're trying something new and, and experiencing something. You can always go back to what you have. But if, you're, if you have somebody that's stuck on California or stuck on Argentina, try Dolcetta Bialba, particularly from Vara, um, because A, we got quality here uh, to the nth degree. And you know, it's it's this grape might be the grape for them to really understand old world. It really does have a reflection, I would say, of new and old world the way it drinks. I'm not it's certainly an old world wine and that's what it is, but I think new world wine drinkers could really the benefit. Bright, the brightness the brightness of the fruit's gonna get them there. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I guess, I don't know. I can't really describe <laughs> He's tired of waiting well, for I mean, you quit knocking my oh, ass. Oh so, gosh! I mean, that's really not. Well, good. chef, since you're uh, since you're born, uh, what are you thinking about uh, to eat with this recipe? All right, so we're going. We're gonna we're gonna let you pick again. So here's your two choices. Got some beautiful quail from Palmetto Farms in today, and or I did some roasted whole shiitake mushroom caps that I'm gonna put a gratin of chicken on. Kind of caramelize, you know, gratin that on the mushroom, or you could have a like the grilled quail with maybe like a little fig or something on it. So you get to choose. Well, the can we do them all? Yeah, yeah, you know what? It's good. Okay, we'll put them on. <laughs> You're gonna like him choosing before you. Yeah, we're just gonna do it all. We're just gonna put them in. This, yeah, I mean, chef. This... You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put that cheese in there too. Awesome. We're gonna do all four. We're gonna so, do the whole tasting in your in your package <laughs> with the two wines. Y'all are spoiled. Sorry about that. Well, if you if you I don't think you are sorry. Right. I'm not too sorry. Uh, this is just simply delicious. It just keeps getting better. It's right. actually drier now. The fruit didn't go anywhere. Mm. Tannins are building. But they're building Tans and the building. air is getting in there and making it solid. It's, it's just a and, and what's great is you have this huge flavor. But it's not a heavy one. Yes. It's very light, very light uh, drinkability. Mm. It's not clinging. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's going right through, but leaving the flavor, but not the weight. Yeah. Delicious. You know, uh, for our for one of our classes, we, we have to drink a bottle of wine, or taste a bottle of wine. Uh, uh, we're and, we're, and we're supposed to, to actually not even taste, just spit it out. Yeah, well, I'd definitely do that. I'd, you know, definitely. I would. That's, I would that's never, what I've been doing. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't drink that. Yeah. So, uh, the, um, the wine last night that, that I was, uh, tasting there, that, the, the finish ruined it for me because it was very, 
clingy to my palate, very film-like. Very film-like. I think that they're... And so... When I haven't done mine yet, but I've, I'm familiar with Sato Seamus. Oh, I love their stuff. And I, I I'm familiar stuff. with their reasoning. I haven't tried the 22, which yeah. I've got to do my project. I'm a huge fan of their winery. But, but I, I think that sometimes, the, the, the even if the sugar isn't really high, the, but those residual sugar wines are clingy. They can be, yeah. And, and like, we drink so few of them, I think sure. it can be a little shocking. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But but to me, kind of like when you when you were describing this finish, I was like, gosh, this was the finish I was wanting to have wine last night. It just didn't have enough. Acid. Did not have this. It didn't have enough. Acid. It wasn't the right acid. It was yeah. not the right acid. It was the sugar yeah. kind of. It's very difficult to make a semi sweet or off dry wine. It's and extremely it's difficult. It's a big challenge for. Uh, that's why I saw turns are so expensive mm -hmm. because they they kind of figured it out, but. Uh, if 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 all wines finished like this, I think the whole world would be a bunch of winos. This is just such a beautiful finish on it. Like you said, Chef, it has all of the flavor without the weight. And of course, that is why we think that this wine would be great for your Thanksgiving feast. Oh, it, this would be, not only is it a great story, beautiful presentation, mm -hmm. but it's the perfect wine for for all those things, some of the sweeter things you have, yeah, uh, at Thanksgiving, the sweet potato casserole, sweet potato casserole, uh, some of, a lot I think of people green, do the like sweeter green, nuts. I think that green bean, the, the baked because, green, yeah, because there's like that kind of like you said, there's like there's the fried onion usually, usually sweet, fried onion. There's some sort some of kind crust. of bacon or mushroom gravy that has uh, a, a, a mommy. It's like mm -hmm. almost it's almost sweet. It I think that for the most part, I mean, some people like you and I make. Like well, a, we do beets and parsley well, and carrots right. too. Well, we, just, and those the enough. fruit on this with all yeah. the all mm -hmm. of that. But yeah. even though you and I would make our own mushroom gravy or whatever, right? The, the condensed one that is used all over America has a sweetness. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Mm -hmm. And I think green beans once they're stewed have a sweetness. Yeah. to them. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The longer you cook them, the, the longer you cook them, mm -hmm. it kind of concentrates their yeah. residual sugar. Right. Um, but you know, so many people, you know, they put sweet uh, pecans in there and their yeah. sweet potatoes. You know, you have the candy yams if you don't. Good point. Um, That's another good one. So the fruit on this is going to do great. But then when you're into like your your Brussels sprouts, your root veg, your ham, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the stringentness of yeah. this is going to going to not look at, is not going to let you down. Yeah, yeah. Cranberry sauce too. Yeah, absolutely. If you're making uh, gelatinized or you know, you just pop out the can, slice a little bit with your turkey. And by the way, for our Thanksgiving cooking class next week. Tuesday, folks. Cranberry, fancy cranberry dre uh, dressing. Mm. What do you call it? Sauce is on there. Yeah. We're going to show you how to make a much elevated version of these classics. So yeah. something to think about. This would be perfect with that. Because they add the orange and the balsamic orange and the red zest. wine. Yeah, the orange zest would play off this yeah. so beautifully. The, and the sweetness, sometimes I'll add in a little orange marmalade to finish it too. And that's, yeah. that sweetness along with the uh, balsamic and wine, I mean, it's just, this could be great. I, just, I would just yeah. eat that and drink this. Yeah. And like, happy things too. We're going to have some wines to complement those kind of things. We're going to have some classics outside of this, obviously. This is for this week, but next week for our, our cooking class, we got uh, some of the classics. See, you know, we're going to have, uh, a, we're going to have a dry Riesling. We're going to have a, we're gonna have a light red, probably Beaujolais. Um, I'm 99% sure that's what I want to do. Uh, we're gonna do some other fun little things uh, that will pique your interest. So if you want to learn a little bit about uh, wine pairing and you want to learn about how to jazz up your side dishes, come to our cooking class Tuesday night here downtown Mount Airy. Shout so much. Me. It's gonna be a great time. Super yeah. casual. The restaurant's mm -hmm. gonna be closed. Mm -hmm. You've got. 65 years of cooking experience you know, in front of you. So the Q&A at these things are always great. It feels and like you know, 165. Well, <laughs> it just it probably is. I, I've been saying I've been saying 65 for 10 years now. So <laughs> right. Hell. The uh, but the Q&A is always great. Uh, you know, aside from what we've planned to do for that night, you know, we always get tons of questions, oh, yeah. tributaries, and we love it. We eat yeah. it up. Everybody learns like a lot. A, it's like and a chef's table. Did, did we mention there's one? 
There's wine. There's gonna be a plenty of wine. Yeah, it's like a chef's table with uh, breadcrumbs. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I'm gonna have a little. Uh, I just remembered I got this Chardonnay I want to do too. It's gonna be a great. Night. Yeah, we're gonna. Have yeah. Some, we're gonna. Have He's some already fun. found five wines. Yeah. So, I guess at some point I'll just have to stop. At some point, they, they will, mm -hmm. you'll have to have a. a well, list. if you can, if you can spend some time with us in person on Tuesday night, I can't really say how long it'll last. Well, we'll plan on it lasting an hour, which means it'll last three and a half. Yeah. Well, just stay as long as you want. We're gonna, chef's gonna cook, and we're we're gonna, we're gonna have a great time. I gotta remember, remember to charge my device because I think we should record that. Oh yeah, we should do that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, let's do that. Well, we can do maybe multiple devices so if one dies on us. We have I'll remember to because what what'll happen is I'll mention it to my wife, mm -hmm. and it'll get charged. Yeah. Yeah, she'll, she's the brains of the operation. Well, 100%. We are probably running on fumes here, and I wanted to thank each and every one of you that, that joins us every week, whether it's here in person or on video. I do appreciate all of y'all reaching out and checking, checking on us as we like to check on you guys. Stay connected with us every chance you get. We got so much fun stuff coming. Um, and don't forget, if you need ho you know, holiday side on steroids is kind of basically what we're going to be doing with our cooking class Tuesday is a it's going to be an intimate you know, might have four people might have 10 I don't know we're, we're just doing it for fun so if you want yeah, to be part fun of that, regardless if you want to be part of that uh, that uh, you know small group having some fun on a Tuesday night you know, yeah, where no, this is going to make it official. It'll be the start of the holiday That's season. right. Then we can get our mind. Yeah, it's hard to when it's it 80 hard degrees. To. It's very hard it's to. It's 80 degrees. Today is the last day of that. Yeah. The rain's coming in tomorrow. Bring it cool. There's not we a day. It hasn't rained in a month. There's not a, good, not a day above 65 from the 10-day forecast. Well, we need, we need a little chill in the air for sure. But we're going to get our act together come Tuesday. We're going to get in holiday mode. Lots of delicious wine. And of course, Chef's going to be hooking us up with these beautiful dishes. We're going to eat Hope great, to and it's just going to be, it'll just be a really up-tempo time. Until we meet again. Thank you for being with us as always. We'll see you soon. How about those Texas Rangers? World Series champs.